Welcome to Team 537's Robo Recap for the week of January 3rd through the 10th. I am your host, James Lang. This week began with the kickoff event for the 2015 competition season. Teams from across southeastern Wisconsin traveled to Waukesha County Technical College to watch the first kickoff as it was streamed live simultaneously to events worldwide. And now, the moment you've been waiting for, the 2015 First Robotics Competition game, Recycle Rush! Here's the 2015 field. The theme is recycling, and the objective is to build stacks of totes, place recycling bins on top, and recycle litter. The game is played by two alliances of three teams each on a 27 by 54 foot field, divided into red and blue sides by a step. There are human player stations in the corners. Each side has a landfill zone, an auto zone, and two scoring platforms. Alliances stay on their own side of the field throughout the two and a half minute match, though there will be some interaction near the step. Robots start anywhere on their side of the field, but not in the landfill zone or auto zone. During the 15 second autonomous period at the start of each match, robots use pre-programmed instructions to try to move themselves, yellow totes, and recycling containers into the auto zone. Bonus points are awarded for stacking the yellow totes. Additionally, robots may begin acquiring gray totes and recycling containers from the landfill or the step. As the teleoperated period starts, drivers step forward to take the controls. Alliances earn points by stacking totes on their platforms. Each gray tote is worth two points. Teams may obtain gray totes from either the landfill, the step, or from a human player via the tote shoot. Recycling containers on top of scored totes are worth four points per level. Robots may obtain litter from the human player via the litter chute. Litter in a scored recycling container is worth six points. Litter in the landfill is worth one point. Alliances may attempt to throw litter onto the opposing alliance's side of the field until there are 20 seconds left in the match. Litter not in scoring position on the field at the end of a match is considered unprocessed litter, and each piece will add four points to the score of the opposing alliance. Alliances may work together to earn a 20-point cooperation bonus by placing four yellow totes on the step. Stacking these four totes earns an additional 20-point bonus for each alliance. To rank well during qualification matches and advance through the playoff matches to the finals, teams will want to maximize their score for each match. Except for the final matches, winners of individual matches will not be declared, as this has no direct bearing on tournament performance and recycle rush. For team member Isabel Kristowiak, this was her first kickoff event. But I didn't know really what to expect, so for me it was actually pretty fun to like learn all that stuff. Like we learned about what our game challenge was and I thought it was pretty fun learning all about that and kind of getting hands on with it. After learning about this year's game, Recycle Rush, Team 537 broke into groups and discussed rules and strategy before moving to the WCTC gym to see a mock of the 2015 course for themselves. Well, this year, with in terms of stacking the totes, is definitely going to be a challenge because they can get up to six feet high in the air, and that's definitely really high, especially for a robot, when your height limit's only six feet, six inches tall. So when you're putting the recycling can on top, that's only six inches that you have to grab the bottom of it to put it on top. As one of the few teams in the area to have a full course, select mentors and alumni of Team 537 were allowed to see plans for the 2015 course a few days early so that they could build the mock-up and were not allowed to reveal any part of the game to anyone before the official kickoff. On Monday, members of the team met at the Pauline Haas Public Library to analyze the game, design a competitive strategy, and work out the parameters of our design. This meeting gives students a chance to get away from the usual work setting and focus solely on the challenge ahead.
Tuesday and Wednesday, we're all about taking ideas and turning them into something physical. Our design CDT is the most crucial stage in this process. Sean Thompson is our design lead. Once we figure out what we want the robot to do, next we have to figure out how we want the robot to do it. So we move into the prototyping stage. In the prototyping stage, we take all the ideas that we think are going to work and we see if they actually work in real life. So we take some 2x4s and some plywood and start mocking up our ideas and have them interact with the game pieces. On Thursday, students work to turn their drawings to real prototypes using scrap materials and quickly manufacture temporary parts. By doing this, team members can see the effectiveness of their designs and make necessary changes. After we decide which prototypes work the best, we move into the true design phase, where we are using 3D modeling software on the computers. Then we create drawings with all the dimensions for all the holes and the parts, and we send those out to the shop so the guys can start making them on our lathes and mills. Thanks for joining us for this summary of the first week of build season. Tune in next week for Team 537 Robo Recap. Thanks for watching.